Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today we're doing something a bit unusual, but I also think this will be interesting information, particularly for those of you moving from an Intel system to an AMD build. So for this one, we're taking a look at what happens when you move your Windows install from an Intel system and then carry it over to an AMD Ryzen build. And I'll be using Windows 11, but the data also applies to Windows 10 users, as we've seen the exact same thing multiple times over the years. The temptation for a lot of people when building a new PC or making a platform upgrade is to stick with their existing boot drive. So just slot that into the new build, let Windows reconfigure itself and then go to work, well, probably game. Uh, this method does work. It is quick, it's easy, convenient, and generally very stable. So why not? Well, if you care about maximizing performance, it's not a great idea as you'll almost always be leaving something on the table. Why exactly that is, I'll be honest, I'm not sure. I wasn't able to solve this issue on Windows 10, though I also didn't put that much effort into my investigation as it's really best to just do a fresh install, especially if you're seeking accurate benchmark data. So that's what we do. Now, before we actually get to the testing, let's quickly rewind to 2017 when AMD first released Ryzen. Of course, at the time, Ryzen was very new and exciting and really an unknown quantity. And it actually took me a few months to work out what I really thought about it. Part of the problem being that performance was just all over the place. And this was partly due to the fact that Zen was amazing for core heavy productivity tasks and kind of weak when it came to gaming. Of course, there was an architectural reason for this. Core memory latency was high. So for memory sensitive gaming, this was a problem. But we were seeing larger performance variations than normal between the various review outlets. And again, there were numerous reasons for this. For example, Ryzen was very memory sensitive. Motherboards were constantly being updated to improve performance along with memory compatibility. And the list just goes on. In fact, leading up to my Ryzen 7 1700, 1700X and 1800X day one review, I was helping quite a few different tech channels troubleshoot performance related issues. Of course, I won't name names, but at least two people I was helping missed or skipped the first step in the AMD review guide, and that was to do a fresh install of Windows. Under the pump and running out of time, they simply moved the SSD from their Intel test system and installed it in the Ryzen system, updated the drivers, and of course got testing. It's easy enough to get caught out by doing this as well because programs such as Cinebench, which reviewers often use to check performance, they're not sensitive to such changes and appear to work as expected with very little variance. But this isn't the case for games and carrying over an old install can really mess with gaming performance. And that's exactly what these two reviewers were seeing. After eventually working out what had happened, a fresh install of Windows 10 solved the gaming performance issues and they were back on track. Since then, I have on multiple occasions stressed to our audience that it's always best to create a fresh install of Windows when moving to a new platform, especially if you're transitioning from Intel to AMD. Quite oddly, going the other way doesn't seem to impact performance nearly as much, if at all. And again, I'm not quite sure what's going on here. As many of you will be aware, I've done a lot of Windows 11 testing recently on Intel 10th, 11th, and 12th gen series processors, as well as AMD's Ryzen processors. During that testing, I had a Windows 11 install that I made on the Core i9 11900K, and I was due to format that drive for a different test. But before I did, I took the opportunity to install it in my Ryzen 9 5950X test system to see how it compared to a fresh install of Windows on that same system. I removed the Intel drivers, I then installed the AMD chipset driver, and I even uninstalled the performance related Windows updates and then had them reinstalled. And it all appeared to be working just fine. Stability was excellent without a single hiccup and without any benchmark data from a fresh install, it would be really hard to tell if performance was where it should be. In fact, it would be virtually impossible. So today we're gonna to be able to compare that data with a fresh install to see if there is any difference. Now for this testing, the Ryzen 9 5950X was installed on the ASUS ROG Crosshair 8 Dark Hero motherboard using BIOS version 3801. Then for the memory, I used Crucial's Ballistics DDR4 3200CL16 kit and for the graphics card, the MSI GeForce RTX 3090 Gaming X Trio. Now I'm not gonna go over our entire benchmark suite as you'll get an idea with just a few benchmarks. So I don't wanna waste your time and mine by going over a few dozen graphs. Okay, let's get into the results. Starting with Cinebench R23, everything looks pretty normal. These results are based on a three run average. So the fresh install was consistently a little bit faster, but we're only talking about a 2% difference here, which is what most reviewers would just write off as being within the margin of error, which is certainly fair enough. 
So if you were using Cinebench R23 as a quick performance check to make sure the CPU is behaving as it should, this would certainly suggest that you're on the right track. Moving on, we start to find some performance related issues with 7-Zip, though only when looking at the compression performance, which saw an 8% performance drop when compared to the fresh install. But for whatever reason, decompression performance isn't affected as we're only seeing a 1% performance drop off here. So really that is within the margin of error. Running the Adobe Photoshop and Premiere Pro benchmarks only shows a minor decline in performance of two to 4%, which probably shouldn't set off any alarm bells. And really for most users, the convenience of not having to reinstall everything, it's probably worth a two to 4% decline in performance. But this is where things can go very wrong, gaming. Now we're only looking at a 3% decline for Rainbow Six Siege, which obviously isn't a big deal and no gamer is really gonna notice that. So I think for the convenience of not having to install Windows again, a 3% drop in frame rate is probably gonna be worth it for most gamers. That said, we do see a more substantial 9% drop in F1 2021 when looking at the 1% low performance. And while frame rates overall are still very high, that is quite a big drop. However, we are looking at a 13% drop for Cyberpunk 2077. Again, we're looking at the 1% low, but here even the average frame rate was reduced by an 8% margin. And in this game, that is quite a big deal. But the biggest performance loss was felt in Watch Dogs Legion as the 1% low was consistently much lower. And after a three run average, we're looking at a 23% drop in performance with a 6% hit to the average frame rate. So the performance impact does vary depending on the game. And this is exactly what we've seen in the past when trying to diagnose this issue with Windows 10. So as we've said numerous times in the past, when upgrading to a new platform or an entirely new PC, it's always best to do a fresh install of Windows if you care to unlock the full performance of your new hardware. Now, depending on what you're doing, the performance difference can be negligible, but as we saw in games, it can also mean you've forfeited over 20% performance in some titles. Of course, depending on your hardware configuration and how bogged down your Windows install is with extra software, the performance hit could be even more severe. That said, you could also see less of a performance loss, but based on our experience, what we've seen here is pretty typical when moving from a Windows install on an Intel system to Ryzen. Now in past Q&As when discussing the issues we've seen when carrying over Windows installs from an Intel system to AMD, there has been some pushback from viewers claiming that this isn't a thing. I'm not sure how these users are verifying their data, but I can assure you this is absolutely a thing and others have also seen it. Speaking with Steve from Gamers Nexus recently, he confirmed that this issue is something that I've seen in the past when helping users or other tech media outlets. I suspect those who have upgraded from an Intel based system, maybe a Sandy Bridge owner stepping up to Zen 3, for example, and has just slotted in their existing boot drive with an old install of Windows, believes all is well because programs like Cinebench are reporting performance to be as expected, while gaming performance is still miles better as the CPU overall is much faster. So that's probably what's going on there. At the end of the day, it is very quick and convenient to just carry over an old Windows install. But if you want to ensure that you're getting the maximum amount of performance from your new upgrade, then it really is best to do a fresh install. And of course, keep the operating system as clean as possible. And that is going to do it for this one. Just a quick video highlighting an issue that we've talked about for years now. And it is still a thing with the arrival of Windows 11. So if you like the video, you know what to do. You can subscribe for more content. And if you'd like to join the Harbor Unbox community, then you can do so over at Floatplane or Patreon. The links for both of those are in the video description. You'll get access to our exclusive Discord server, monthly live streams, Q&As, and behind the scenes content. So yeah, check it out if you're interested. If not, perfectly fine. And I would like to just thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time. Mm -hmm.